The other run-of-the-mill rock star is his overwhelming commitment to changing the world and making it a better place. Our respect for Bono comes from the fact that he acts on what he says. Instead of simply signing over his name to causes like third world debt elimination, world hunger, Greenpeace and Bosnia relief aid, he gets fully involved with his time and his money. When I think of peace, I think of hippies with flowers in their hairs and everything, but I think you can be aggressive. You can be an aggressive pacifist and, and I suppose in you too, that's we consider ourselves aggressive pacifists. I think Bono has made the most of the opportunity that he's been given as the lead singer with the world's biggest rock band to try to make some big, try to contribute to changes in world thinking on very important issues. When Bono gets his teeth into something, he becomes extremely dogged and he will pursue the, the cause or the issue relentlessly. And the reason that uh, it's not naff, uh, even if sometimes his posturing embarrasses his band or maybe even himself, is that he actually does have an influence. He can get to the President of the United States, he can sit down uh, George Bush and say, look, you're going to have to do something about third world debt, and something happens. It is the crumbs off our table that we offer these countries, and it is not good enough. The President of the United States doesn't think it's good enough. And, and I believe him when he says he is ready to, do, you know, to up the ante. So um, it doesn't matter how naff people think the speech is, um, or how inappropriate they may think having artists, film stars or rock stars involved in politics, Bono is effective, so that makes it completely legitimate. Stephen Rand is the campaign manager for the Jubilee Debt Campaign. The vision of this organisation is a world in which the people of the poorest countries are liberated from the crushing burden of debt and in which the future financial arrangements between rich and poor nations are founded on fairness, accountability and transparency. Bono has dedicated much of his time to pushing this cause forward. I was at a meeting with uh, the Gordon Brown, the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the United Kingdom organised, and Bono was there via a video link from Paris. And he made a comment then which I thought was really interesting. They were talking about Live Aid. And Bono made the comment that uh, something more needed to be done because we didn't want to be the generation that betrayed its own heart. And I thought that was really interesting because here was a group of rock singers who in 1984 came to make a record to raise money for Ethiopia. They did the concerts. Uh, lots of people are now too uh, young to remember it, but it made a big impact. Live Aid proved that, that music um, can unite people towards very specific ends. Bono is one of the few big rock stars left who is prepared to actually try and do things uh, on the political stage and who is accepted for doing that sort of thing. And he's never forgotten the importance of that issue, along with Bob Geldof, who's obviously a friend, and he's worked on this issue as well. So I think it was that idea that if you cared enough to make a record, you cared enough to do a concert, you still need to care enough to keep going with the issue. And I think what's really impressive about Bono is that he hasn't just you know, done it once and then forgotten about it. He's kept going. He's taken an interest. We know it's difficult. It's a steep incline, you know, to climb Everest. You know, it's, it, it is a dream. But there's no honour in climbing halfway up, is there? You know? But the focus thing that he does about, like, third world death and that, which is was born those sort of 20 years ago now in those visits I think to Ethiopia and that it's just it's phenomenal the energy he has it's phenomenal the doors he can open and the people he can get to meet and the new Gingriches and the Bill Clintons and the George Bushes and the he just won't take no for an answer he just keeps going I just don't get it I mean like, it even looks ludicrous like you know uh, we have an item on the news and so, uh, meanwhile President Bush today met Bono it just sounds ridiculous I mean, sorry, you met Bono. Like, it's, this sounds like a knacker from the north side or whatever in a rock band. It's ludicrous. Well, Bono always, always was committed to the idea that you could make the world a better place. 
And obviously there's different ways in which you can interpret that and different ways in which you can try and do it. And one is through music and by contributing a body of creative work. Um, but he's, he's never been satisfied by that aspiration on its own. I'd like to think we scared the shit out of a few politicians because there's an anger on the streets of this city and this country, of Ireland, and I want to be a part of that anger. James Topham is head of communications for War Child UK, a network of independent organisations working across the world. War Child helps children affected by war. Bono's involvement with this charity has changed people's lives. Uh, I think Bono's the amount of time Bono spends dedicated to causes shows that obviously he's a very compassionate man but I think the, the difference between Bono and a lot of people is that Bono actually goes into great detail and he does understand the issues and he's not just going around kissing babies. He's, you know, I've seen Bono debate with Jeremy Paxman on Newsnight and win and you know, a lot of politicians can't do that. We talked about the war in Iraq but what I wanted to talk about was the war against AIDS. Two and a half million people are going to die next year. Two and a half million Africans are going to die of AIDS next year because they don't have the medicines that we take for granted in the West. This is a war. These are our casualties. And if these people were not African, if they were not black, do you think we would let them die? No. It's phenomenal what he's done. It's phen I'm convinced there has to be more than one Bono. He can't be in all these places at all these different times at the World Health Summit meeting for this here and such and such here and a global warming here and a this here and then out with you two here and then with some Cindy Crawford there. It's astonishing how he puts himself about. It's not just an out time of you two. It's even while you two are supposed to be in the studio and Edge is trying to drag him back in, which has stopped this George Bush and Tony Blair nonsense. He's absolutely 100% and everybody will know this. I mean, the evidence is there committed to what he's doing. John Bowler is an environmental activist and works for Greenpeace. He was the campaign manager for the Sellafield nuclear power plant protest in England. Bono and the rest of you two have been quite uh, involved in the, the Sellafield campaign for many, many years. Uh, I, I can remember uh, being in contact with, the, with Bono back in 1987 on the Sellafield issue. Love the smell of napalm in the morning. Get one of these on, please. Bono and the band took time out from their heavily demanding Zuropa tour to be part of the protest. They had performed the night before in Manchester and endured a four-hour journey to get there. They uh, boarded their, their uh, tour bus. Uh, we had about a four-hour drive up to Cumbria. Uh, I remember at about four or five o'clock in the morning going from the solo on board our inflatables across to a small harbour where we picked up Bono and, uh, and, and the guys. Uh, shuttled them back across to the solo. Uh, first things first, of course, we all sat down then, had breakfast, had a bit of a chat, introductions all round, people got to know who was who. Uh, then we you know, asked Bono to, I suppose, get ready for the day kitted him up in his protective suit and goggles and gloves, etc. Nuclear fly. Put him on board the, uh, the inflatables. Uh, and then they went across to the beach. Pretty silly. <laughs> but uh, all of a good show. That would have lasted quite a while on the beach as well, of course. Then they came back to us, to the ship, spent a bit of time talking, wanted to know, you know, were we happy with, you know, how they had done everything. And uh, then they headed off. So a very, very long day, particularly for them, given that they played a concert, drove all night, came on board and spent most of the day working with us as well. I think they're scared stiff. I think that they, were, that they went to such trouble to cancel um, the demonstration shows they've got something to hide. I think the big thing with Bono, of course, is he is probably the biggest celebrity that, that I have worked with, uh, and from the rock world that probably Greenpeace has even worked with. He is someone who is, has been long-term involved with the campaign, and I think maybe it's his uh, longevity and his staying power with, uh, with, with this campaign and other issues 
that uh, make him maybe special to work with. Large corporations can bully um, um, people like us, people like Greenpeace, and, and they can attempt to gag us um, and get away with it. I think that's, I think actually that is, very, that has become offensive to a lot of people.